know, sort of right on the heels of there being a lot of um, energy and momentum happening with activists in across the United States uh, operating under the sort of banner of Black Lives Matter. And it seemed like this was an interesting moment to stage an exhibition and an event series that would explore um, race and solidarity in the 21st century, that would sort of update the conversation from that 60s and 70s reference point to the, to the present. There are lots of things happening in this country, right, around Black Lives Matter, um, and and you know, in response to police brutality um, against Black communities and um, you know, high levels of incarceration. And this is sort of one of the biggest um, national conversations that's happening around race in, in the U.S. Um, and for for. Asian American folks, or even just, just Asians in the U.S., right? Um, we're we're kind of placed in this very complicated position, right? Um, because we, as as brown people, we as folks who are who are coming from immigrant communities, um, you know, we experience a lot of racism in this country, but we also are responsible for perpetuating a lot of racism, um, and in particular against Black communities in the U.S. So what do you know about the model minority myth, if anything? And what kinds of messages did you receive growing up about Asian American people and black people? And it, it suggests that um, Asian and Asian Americans um, have innate abilities, and I use the word innate, natural abilities to achieve some kind of success. Um, and so the part, of, the reason it's a myth is because it's not something that's innate. People work in order to achieve things that they get. So um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the other side of it, um, like part of the anti-black um, ideology is that they're innately um, lazy or something like that. It's the opposite with um, Asian, Asian Americans. And it was created in order to um, to divide and to prevent any kind of solidarity. It works well for the white supremacist structure. But there was a push towards anti-blackness. You um, don't want to be that. And so if you can't be something other, even if you can't be white, which was the goal, um, you're definitely not black, and it's going to push you closer to that. And so that was the purpose, or that is the purpose for it. What I remember as a child, even, was being, you know, kind of told either explicitly or just absorbing that black people were dangerous, uneducated, and artistic, creative, expressive. Um, uh, and to me, all of those things were actually attractive or exciting. So I always, as a, as a, as a child, I, was, I felt a, 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 some sort of an attraction to black culture. What are your views of Asian American? And, 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 and what place they occupy politically. They were like, pouring up, they were like, if you see them, that means you're in a good place, because they're a competition. Mm -hmm. So like, I was talking to my household, hey, you're a competition, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you know, they're a competition to you, they don't like you, but if they're in your space, then you're smart, that means that you're like, you're going somewhere. So it really was like, you are the model, like, you are the one that, if I see you next to me, then I'm doing okay. So at school, I'm excelling, but I'm also like, I am looking for that kind of symbol that someone told me, like a person who became a symbol to me that if I see them, then I'm doing well. 